Welcome to the Womanhood Lectures, where we bring you topics on issues that matter to you, the modern day woman. I just wanted to give you guys a quick intro to a show that uh, Lyra and I posted or actually recorded totally off the cuff. We weren't planning on releasing it as a show, but we've decided that we will. So this is the intro to our Gen X talk. Enjoy. So I'm really getting such a kick out of uh, watching TikTok these days and seeing the whole Gen X train. Oh my goodness. Um, Generation X, which I am part of, uh, you are part of, where you're you're on the younger end, sort of like the tail end of it, but anyone born between um, around 1965 to 1980. Okay. God, I want to really date us. But, you know, we're in our 40s. Most of us are in our 40s, kind of, you know, pushing over 50, uh, some of them. And um, I'm just seeing this incredible, I want to say like this tidal wave of people coming together, which is so heartwarming. Uh, It's so much fun to watch. I think someone poked the bear online. (laughs) Good. Some millennial or Gen Z poked the bear and started talking, started trash talking Gen Xers and saying how we are the worst generation in history. The what? worst. What does worse mean? Are you kidding what me? What are they implying? Like, what are they talking about specifically? Well, it doesn't matter because it it woke up every single Gen Xer <laughs> on the internet who was like, excuse me? And it was right. so funny because even me, when I was watching Stitches, I was like, let me take my earrings off for this one. Uh, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and see like, what is this girl saying? And it was just hilarious because all of us feel the same way. I feel like we grew up in this era. I feel like we were the last generation who grew up completely free range. Yes. Right? Like... Do, I, I was definitely one of those kids, age seven, age eight, I'd go out and play all day and come home when the street lights came on right. to eat dinner. My parents didn't know where I was. They had no way of finding me, tracking me, nothing. They mm-hmm. basically kicked me out of the house and said, go outside and play. And I wouldn't come back for 12 hours. Pretty much. And that was so normal. I was outside. All I, the time. All the time. Riding my bike. Walking at into park, neighborhoods at right? different people's houses. So sometimes people will go to your house. Sometimes you go to their house. You just show up. Right. Basically show up when you're hungry. Yeah. Right. You And, and then your, your parents would continually kick you back out of the house. Like I remember that. Yeah. I remember once when I was a kid, I, something happened like, so I lived in this townhouse complex. Right. So of course all the kids hung out together. We would just leave our houses. We'd roam all day, do our thing, climb trees, do whatever, right? Um, Did really stupid things. But I remember something happened. I got grounded for the first time in my life. I don't know. I must have been seven. So my mother really tried. She she kept me in. She was like, okay, you're grounded. You can't go out. You can't see your friends, da, da, da. And I was like, okay. Like, you know, I was, we were that generation. We were like, Psh, put me under a rock. I'm going to find something to do. So I started following her around the house, not even on purpose, but because I was bored, following her around, asking her what she was doing. Why are you cleaning that? What are we doing here? How, how come this has to go over here? And no joke, it took her about 10 minutes before she was like, ah, oh, just get out. And she literally <laughs> kicked me out of the house. And I was like, okay. And I just left. Um, but I, I do remember with so much fondness, my childhood, being so free range. It was free range. Yeah. For sure. It was like, it was amazing. I was taking the bus when I was 11. I was all over the place. No one, no one could track me down. And the stupid things you did, there's no evidence of it today. <laughs> and we're alive. But that's the point. Yeah. Is that we, we, we gave birth to that next generation that's complaining about us. I know. <laughs> I'm like, like are you kidding me? We're the parents of I'm them. Like, so well, we so probably crazy. had like, we were free range. Yes. And we knew what they were doing. Oh, we that's why. That, hey. Okay. So, yeah. Tell me about your childhood. Oh. Uh, it was, I was outside all the time. I was very, yeah. I was, uh, I was playing every single sport. I uh-huh. was always on the block. Um, I just really honestly played like, you know, we knew what it was like to not have cell phones and not have every single, you know, uh, portable thing that, you know, would entertain us. Right. It was, it was our friends. It was hanging out. It was like a bat and a ball and my bike. So Mm -hmm. one time, um, actually I borrowed my friend's bike once and, uh, I rode it down the street and it was a bit downhill and there was no brakes 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was like, you know those bikes that like you have to pedal back in order to stop Was it the a bike? banana seat bike? I don't know. I had a is. banana seat bike. Okay. Anyways, I, I, I digress. Pull, I pulled the brakes and yeah. then the whole chain came off. Oh God. Yes. I remember those. Yes, yes, yes. And then okay, okay. I was like, what? And I'm still going really fast <laughs> that I like rammed into a parked car, right? Are you kidding me? I didn't, yeah, I didn't. I was like, oh my God, I'm in so much trouble. But it was like a big car. It didn't do anything to the car. Okay, so stop right there. You're worried about being in trouble. Of course. Our kids would have been on the on the ground crying. Probably called 911. Call right? 911. I'm hurt. I skinned my knee. Not me. I'll tell what? you. I'll tell you what I did. I right? picked up the pieces of the oh bike. Oh my gosh. And I was on I can the still block. see this. I was on the block of my house. So you pick house. up the broken bike. Yes. You don't worry about yourself. Not my bike. <laughs> I'm in big trouble, okay? I'm going to get the beeps. Oh, my gosh. Uh, pick up the pieces. Yes. Run to the back laneway because I, uh, I lived in downtown Toronto. Yeah, so. okay, okay. Back laneway. Hide the bike behind the AC. It's dinner time. I no. run in the house downstairs to the bathroom. Yes. Wipe my face because I'm bleeding. Bleeding? <laughs> You can totally see the scar. Uh, yep. Right now. I've totally been there. Yep. Bleeding. And you just clean yourself up. Clean myself up. Yep. Go to the dinner table. And I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> just no hiding way. my face. Oh my totally gosh. Totally bleeding. Everybody so, noticed except my parents. But this Except is, your parents. <laughs> they're just like, because uh, they're busy. They're just oh like God. working parents is... that, you know, and everybody's sitting at the table. Like, so face. our generation. Our parents are totally neglectful parents. We love you. Don't get don't get me wrong. Neglectful. It's about prioritizing their lives and saying, "Okay, you know what? I'm not going to baby my kids." Right? They were always working, and they had no idea what we were doing. We knew what we needed to do. I know. How did we know that? My parents made us clean the house for three hours, and then it was free reign to be whatever we needed to do. On Saturday mornings, good cartoons, girl. As long as we got good grades, yes, and that's it. I had strict Indian parents, so I mean. Uh, as long no, as we grades, good grades, grades were really important for and sure. And we're, there was no police being called on us. <laughs> we were good. And you came right? back alive. You came back alive. Right? No one would know. Your life is not, you know, completely, I don't know. These kids are, monitored. these kids are spoiled rotten. That's all I got to say. Well, we're spoiling them we're though, spoiling right? We're spoiling them, I know, right? To a certain degree. But I just, I think it's so funny. It, so anyways, I've been, like all the things that they're posting. Yes. Things like drinking water out of a hose. I know. Running through sprinklers. Like that was literally my whole summer. I know. Right? It was good times. Yeah. It was good times. It was, it, I, and I, and, and I look back on it now and I'm like, wow, we, what were we doing at yeah. age seven, I was making my lunch and walking myself to school. And sometimes I wouldn't even think about it. Do you it. want that for your kids? Because like I know that like I push. Oh, believe me, I try to like grab them and be like, okay, let's go, let's do be outdoorsy, and they're looking at me like, yeah, you know <laughs> what? Like I got stuff to do, or I'm gonna go to my friend's house, and I'm like, right. okay, yeah, like, I know. Really, it's very hard. The stuff that we appreciated as kids. Well, the thing is, out the window. If the whole generation of kids is not doing it, and you're the only one, I tried that when my kids were younger, but no one went out and just knocked on your door and showed up. You had right. to do, you had to call the other parent and you have to do play dates. Right. Like we had to do that. I would have liked to just let my kids go run, climb a tree, do what you want. I'm a little bit kind of like that with my son now where he, he will kind of just leave the house and go ride his bike and, right. you know, but of course I have find my phone. So if I really, really needed, needed to, find to find him, him. I just check sure. my phone and I know where he For is because sure. he has his phone and whatever. But I mean, I trust, I pretty much trust my kids that they, they would figure out a way, but I tried it when they were younger. I remember this one day and this, this was a real eye opener for me. I was, I was walking home with all three of my kids. They were, I want to say 10, eight, no, 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 nine, seven, and like five ish or four ish anyways somewhere around there and um the girls i felt were old enough to walk home on their own so Mm -hmm. i was walking with my son went to the park and literally my house is a five minute walk from their school so they were walking up the street and i'm like girls just go straight home the only place that i wouldn't be able to see them was that last like half a block around the corner where i couldn't actually see my house right I said, you guys can go ahead. They were so excited. They're going to walk home all by themselves and let themselves in the house because I had left it all open. And I'm going to stay at the park and, and, and play, right? And right. let my son play. So they walk off. Some mother comes up to me. Some mother comes up to me. I won't name her. And she's like, 
oh, where are the girls? Because she had, you know, they were kind of friends with one of her kids. And I was like, oh, I, you know, I let them walk home today. Really excited. And she yes. goes, you did what? <laughs> no, her face was just like, what? You let them walk home alone? And I was just like, why? What? What's wrong? What? What's going on? Is there like something going on? Is there a fire somewhere? I was just like, what? And she goes, I would never let my kids walk alone <laughs> in this neighborhood. And I was like, why would you live in this neighborhood then? It's yeah. a beautiful neighborhood. I'm like, what are you talking about, girl? And I was like, oh, well, um, they, they're, it's right, my house is right there. She's like, oh, yeah, I'm sure it's fine for you, but I just, I would never let my, never let my, like, it's that, like, purse, like, mm. pearl clutching. And I was like, what have we become? Are you kidding me right We're now? We're very fearful. Like, very fearful society. But come on. And literally, I was just like, um, yeah. please don't call CAS on me. <laughs> um, I swear they're right there. They're right there. I can, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving right now. I'm going to follow them home. Like, I was just like, oh, my God, what is going on here? And this is literally, I feel like a lot of women, a lot of people that I've come across when my kids were younger and I was kind of trying this free range thing, right. like, walk home alone, da, 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 da. Go, go show up at someone's house. And my, my kids would be like, I can't. You have to call. You have to call so-and-so's mom and let them know. And you guys have to, like, she she can't, I can't just show up at her door and knock on the door and, and her come out and play. I was like, why not? I'm so sad, right? But this is literally the generation of parents now that we have become. We have. I don't know what happened seriously between my childhood and them it's the fear it's crazy it's 100 percent fear yeah yeah fear. so because like we didn't have fear when we were kids we were yeah. just like and then our parents didn't have that fear like well our parents like, didn't okay. know they right? didn't know because it wasn't like in maybe their face all the time right yeah maybe and it's easier when you don't know so much it's now like it's information age where oh, we figured things out i know and bottom line is is we have to learn to let them you know, let them, let them go. <laughs> I know, I know it was an experience for me to like allow my, my daughter to like take the transit by herself, yeah. you know, and she's like 15 years old, Yes. Uh, going to the city by herself and the yeah, go train yeah, yeah. by herself. And it yep. was like such a great experience for her. And I thought yeah. to myself, I was like, I was like 10 years old walking the Doing streets, that. Queen Absolutely. Street and, you know, downtown Toronto. I was raised in the city. So yeah. it was like nothing for me, right. you know, but it was to a big just deal be like, well, I mean, you granted, know. okay, fine. We, we live in the burbs. Right. So it's, it's, it takes a little more effort to kind of get them to do this right. stuff, but come on. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I miss it. So I'm, I miss I'm very, times, I'm very sure. proud to be, I'm very proud to be to have the childhood that I did. And by the way, Gen Even Xers though... don't look like Gen Xers. Oh, we all look great. I know. <laughs> yes, yes, we do. It's true. I've been. We. I think we were the ones that broke the whole like you know forty is the new. Yes, 30 I think or... so. I think so. Yeah. Yes, that's us. That's us. We are innovators. We are problem solvers. Yes, we are MacGyvers. Like when the zombie apoc apocalypse <laughs> comes, give me a toothpick. Give me a pencil give me an eraser an elastic band and a clip and i will get you free <laughs> i will find a way i will get you out of that house like honestly i feel like that's that's the generation that um we yes. grew up in right yes. like we just we figured things out 100 percent. we didn't complain about everything we just went ahead went about our business so yeah someone poked the bear the wrong bear yeah because now sure. I'm, I'm just so excited like this is just so much fun watching all of this stuff i'm like i'm gonna join this train yes the music was amazing the style and fashion was really fun like i, I feel know. like everything was like very happy in our childhood yes like always very positive and like creative like we're a really creative generation so yeah yeah i just i wanted to uh talk to you about that <laughs> well we all can't right. change when, when we're born yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, we can't it's change all good. when we're born we just know that we we're good. born in the best time yes like, the best time the best time like the best generation ever all you have to do is pop in like 80s soundtracks yep. and like 90s soundtracks oh yeah we're like yeah. in our 20s fun music and you'll know it's way better music <laughs> Then this like absolutely brr, this whatever yeah mumbo rap or whatever that's uh, going on now, yeah so. yeah yeah cool <laughs> all right till next time yes.